So I think that subscription services are potentially making gaming harder for you. Ha! <laughs> I know, bold claim. It's been quite a, uh, intense past couple of days, hasn't it? Well, let me unpack why subscription services are potentially hurting gaming. I am not going to sit here and say that subscription services are terrible. Because they're not. They give plenty of people opportunities to play games that they would have otherwise not played. Look at Lies of P or even Sea of Stars. These games are games that are wildly popular and have done great because of subscription services. But for me at least, I've realized, dude, I've been like, honestly, getting rid of a lot of things because I feel like I have a lot of distractions in my life. And one of the big ones, aside from social media, that I got rid of as of late was my subscription services for movies. I've decided that I am going to purchase or rent movies moving forward and not spend so much on, you know, the subscription. Now, I know that means that I'm not going to be able to watch certain things, right? Because certain things only come out to Netflix, or Hulu, or whatever. But I don't watch television shows, so that's not really something I have to worry about. But for gaming... Now, gaming has two major services that a lot of us have talked about and have heard about. Game Pass, which I've talked at length about, and I say that's the best deal in gaming. And then there's PlayStation Plus. It used to be called PlayStation Now. But now it's called PlayStation Plus. Both of them have base tiers to have online access to their online gaming stuff. And then they come with a ton. And I mean a ton of games. PlayStation now having like like over five. Eight, I think I clocked at like almost 700 games. Maybe it's more than that. I'm not sure. And uh, Game Pass Ultimate having the actual just Game Pass as a whole having their first party titles released day one and you can just play them. Things that you feel like, oh man, I gotta have this service because I wanna have access to all these games and stuff like that. And then we see something crazy happening. Digital only future. So then you think, oh man, I gotta have these online subscription services because if I don't have the online subscription service, I'm gonna have digital games anyway. I'm not really buying physical games so I might as well rent physical games forever and ever and ever. Amen. Right? Right. I feel like that is what we're all being pushed towards more and more and more is this subscription-based gaming model where you don't really own anything. And even with digital games, like you don't really own them. And we're seeing that there are even stores, physical game stores that used to buy and sell games that are saying, uh, we're not really going to do that anymore. I was looking or I read an article and watched videos about it over these past couple of days. There's a place apparently in the UK that's deciding, hey, we're not even going to take your trade-ins anymore. We're kind of done with that. That was like the old us. Uh, hashtag 2024, new year, new me. And uh, we're not really going to do the whole physical thing anymore. Best Buy is clearing physical games off their shelves. Physical media as we know it is ceasing to exist more and more and more and subscription services oddly enough are becoming more and more expensive huh what's happening now i'm not going to sit here and joe rogan conspiracy theory the heck out of it but i will say that let's just do some very very basic math when it comes to this idea Mathematical equation number one are real numbers. For me, I sat down and I looked at the prices of all of the subscription services that I use as far as streaming movies and television shows. Now, I have a family. I have two children and I have a wife. My wife does watch television shows or TV shows, whatever you want to call them, and she does use those streaming services to do so. You know, she doesn't watch them as much. And she and I have both talked at length about what our evenings consist of. Usually mine is more and more video games, whether it's on the couch next to her with my Switch or in this office playing something on my TV. Video games seem to be where I spend a majority of my time. Hers is watching shows, but she is like, I want to read more. She used to read a ton of books at a time, so she's like, I want to go back to reading. I don't really care to watch all these shows. There's nothing really good out anyway, so what's the point? So I tallied up all of the different subscription services we had with the increase in price of Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, Max, Showtime, 
all of these different ones that we have to watch a television show here, a television show or movie here. And it came out to a whopping $100 a month. $100. I think it was like really 97. Anyway, we're spending over a grand a year. Now, let's take that grand a year and let's budget it properly. How many times in that year do we actually sit down and watch a movie together? Let's be extremely, extremely unrealistic, but let's just run some numbers. Let's say we do it once a week. Once a week, we sit down and watch a movie. Realistically, while we're watching a movie, because it's really non-consequential, it's on Netflix, we're streaming it, it's really, to us, because Netflix is such a baked in cost, it ends up feeling like it's free. You don't really feel like you paid for anything because you're subscribing to it. You don't even see the money come out. It's just part of the thing and we've all been doing it for such a long time. And I know people share accounts, but even Netflix is like, yo, we're losing money on this. So we got to start charging people based on their IP addresses. And you can change your IP address and do all the different stuff. But I'm just talking about plain law abiding citizens. Okay. You're on your Netflix account, you're doing it, whatever. We watch, let's say we watch it once a week. We watch an actual movie together, which we don't. But if we did, and we rented that movie via iTunes, because physical stores don't exist anymore, although I feel like maybe someday they might come back, we would be spending $5 a week on average for those specific movies, and that would come out to $250, $260 a year already a $750 savings. But wait, JD, what about those television shows you wanna watch so bad? That is something that you have to deal with nowadays because you don't have access to TV shows, but we don't watch new TV shows because all the new TV shows that come out, let's be honest, they suck. <laughs> I mean, with the exception of something like Stranger Things, which the last season was pretty good, but it's getting a little bit too spiritual for me and I like stuff to be more fantasy based the horror stuff and demons and like I just I just am not the biggest fan Game of Thrones I hear is a great show but I just don't like how much sex is in it so like I'm very particular with my series and as far as anime is concerned I have chosen to read my anime so manga because I don't want to sit down and read pictures because half the shows I want to watch are Japanese only and so really it comes down to 250. Let's just say for three months out of the year, we're gonna spend money on streaming because a show comes out and we wanna watch it. Three months, that's a $300. By renting a movie a month and watching those shows three months out of the year for every single service, which probably won't do all at once, that's 550 bucks. That's half the amount of money we spent the reason why I use TV as this example is because gaming is starting to trend this way. We are seeing the deletion <laughs> of, is that even a word? They're getting rid of physical media. It's happening, right? Best Buy, one of the biggest retailers, at least here in the United States, when it comes to electronics and video games, one of the final frontiers of the big box stores, with the exception of gaming stores, is starting to get rid of their physical stuff. Why? I didn't look too far into it. They probably have reasons. They're not selling this, that, and the other, but whatever. Their stores no longer have physical media. We have consoles that are digital dedicated console. The new model of the PlayStation is a digital console that you can purchase additional hardware to play physical media, right? There is a physical version of the PlayStation 5 Slim, but we know that the digital version is the base. The base isn't a, isn't a physical version. The base is a digital version that you purchase extra hardware to make it a physical version. We have the Nintendo, not Nintendo, the Xbox Series S. We also have the Series X that has a physical thing baked in, but the Series S is the big seller. It's the big seller. And this digital future is very much so Oh, that's good. The Peru tastes good through the AeroPress. This AeroPress is great. Let me know if you want the recipe or if you want. I was thinking of doing like a weekend stream once a month where I just go through all the different coffee brewing techniques. And so let me know if that's something you'd be into. But anyway, we're getting back to this thing. The, the digital stuff is really being pushed more and more and more. 
with digital releases. I mean, look at Starfield. There wasn't a physical release. It was digital codes. These games that come on these discs sometimes don't have the full game on it. It is just digital authentication that exists in physical form. Digital is the way of the future, so they're saying. But what I find to be more and more concerning is that it's not the way of the future as far as an option, it's the way of the future as far as the, it's forceful, like they're forcing it, right? We're getting more and more games. Now there's always gonna be a digital only release of certain things, right? Because they're remasters or whatever it may be. And PC is like, dude, we've been here forever, who cares? I was kind of in that boat a couple weeks ago, but I've been thinking about it more and more and seeing the increase, the more, the big increase in all the prices of these services. And it's starting to concern me because I see that the increase is happening and then they're removing the alternate. They're removing moving the other option for you. I mean, there was a time when digital games were less expensive than the physical counterpart. That was a thing that existed. Buy it physical for 60 bucks or digital for 50 bucks. And now, inconsequential. It doesn't matter. And half the times when you wanna purchase a physical game, they're like, hey, half the time, not half the times. It's like people who say, especially. Ugh, yuck, I'm sorry. Half the time. Half the time, it's not even half the time, it's half of the time. Oh my gosh, I, I'm an uneducated swine. Half of the time, you'll buy a game and you'll be like, sick, I have the game. And then, well, Nintendo's not as guilty about this as the big, the big boys. And it'll be like, buy the base game or the ultimate edition, which gives you another 15 to 20 hours versus a uh, top of content. And you can actually play the whole game. But what is that ultimate version? What is it? Digital digital yes it's extra goodies that you you know download but it's digital you can purchase the box set and you can get the digital deluxe version which sometimes they have collectors versions that have additional downloadable content through a serial code or whatever it may be which is something that they've always done but extra and we're seeing like it speed up more and more and more and there's always gonna be you know the tinfoil hat people but really, when I think about this, in this like all digital future, I, I'm curious, how long can we as a community of gamers stick to the physical part of gaming, right? I don't know how long there is left. I don't know if this is the last generation of physical games, but let's do some math. And this is the idea math, not numbers math. What if for whatever reason you decided i'm going to cancel i know this seems crazy and don't feel obligated to cancel anything on my behalf because i'm certainly not calling cancel your services but i'm curious what it would look like for you as a gamer if you were to sit there because and i'll there's a very very important reason if you were to sit there and be like i'm gonna cancel some of my services that i'm truly not using i'm gonna cancel my game pass service because i don't use it i'm gonna cancel my whatever, my PlayStation Now service, because I don't use it. What sucks though, is that the Game Pass service is like, to have just online gaming, you have to pay over half of what that service is, so they really get you at that. But at any rate, when you're looking at these services, and let's say that the subscription part of it isn't there, and what if instead, what if instead you did something like purchase? A game. I know it seems kind of crazy and I know this is not for everybody but I, I'm just looking at it like what happens when you start buying full games and playing them because you purchase them rather than using some of these subscription services. I don't think there's anything wrong with subscription services but what I'm noticing at least in my gaming way in my gaming life and I'm sure there are other people out there too, is that some of these subscription services, what they do is they introduce an element of decision fatigue, which we've talked at length in this channel. And with that decision fatigue comes a lack of completion. And so you end up having a gaming library that's extensive. And this is another thing that I'm noticing with gaming libraries. 
is we've gotten to a point, at least I've gotten to a point, I'm gonna stop saying we, I've gotten to a point with my gaming library that I go and purchase games and I just say, yeah, I got that game. And that is enough for me rather than even playing the damn thing. Yeah. Th remember when you're like, oh yeah, I see, I'm looking at my Switch thing right here. There's barely any of these have been completed, but I got them. I got them. What? does digital matter if you just have one cart in there and you're playing that game until it's done? You don't need the convenience of hot swapping between 15 games at once. Sure, there are some you're gonna wanna have digital because it's the convenience thing. I know for me, Mario Kart's always wanna have digital because I can play it whenever I want with friends. That's not a mainline game. But for single player games, what would happen if you purchased, kept it in your system until you were finished and then took it out and were like, oh, sick back on the shelf on to the next one i think gaming would be more enjoyable i'm gonna say that gaming will be more enjoyable if you uh maybe don't use the subscription service as much now i'm gonna dodge some of the attacks from people who are like oh gaming services have introduced me to games that i never would have played before and i'm so thankful for it that's exactly what it's supposed to do that's exactly it and to the few of you that that is awesome what I want to know is take inventory and let's have the conversation in the comment section or let's go ahead and hop in Discord and let's have a real conversation. What I want to know is of the people that are subscribed to these services, because I am a perfect example of doing it improperly, how many games on that service have you finished because you had access to that game on that service? I can tell you right now that there are two games I finished because I have access to that game on Game Pass. One is Gunk and the other is Halo one. Those are the only two games I've finished. Sea of Stars I started, but then realized it was on PlayStation, so I prefer to play it on PlayStation. I have PS Now, or the PS Plus Premium Edition. Guess what? I have played not a one, but the comfort of knowing that I can play all of them is there. What a waste, right? What a waste. Nintendo, I'm not touching on because it's different. Nintendo offers you Game Boy, Super Nintendo, and N64 games to play, retro titles. Now, I understand people are like, well, what about the retro titles you get with PlayStation? Ah, uh, you got me. You got me. With Nintendo, I actually do play those games to completion. So that service I am using, but also those games aren't available for purchase anywhere. Those games are there. That is a part of that service. You cannot access a Game Boy version of... Super Mario Land 2 because it doesn't exist. It's only on that service. I don't know why I'm looking over here. Barry. Barry the bookshelf, obviously. And there's Hootie the Owl. And so with Game, uh, Game Pass and with PlayStation Plus and all of these gaming services and then this all digital future moving into the future of gaming, I, I worry that we as gamers are going to end up spending exponentially more money to do significantly less. I know those are huge extreme words, but I really truly believe it because with Game Pass get increasing in price, it used to be $15 for Game Pass Ultimate, now it's $17. For $17 times 12, what is that? 12 times 15 was... Uh, Oh gosh, I don't even know. 17 times 12, that's 120 plus 84, so that's $204. $204, I believe, right? 120 plus 84, yeah, 204 bucks. Okay, $204 a year. Now for some, that's nothing. Oh yeah, 204 bucks, dude, it's no big deal. It's not even a buck a day. Hey, cool, awesome. But what I'm trying to get at is you don't bring anything with you right? You don't own any of it. And for me, having that service, I have the comfort of knowing I have 400 games to play and I play not a one. But when I sit down and purchase a game, when I decide to go back to that, the game gets completed. For goodness sakes, I have my emulation device with, you know, a ton of games on there. And I spend more time trying to figure out what to play. Not since I've decided that there's only three games I'm playing on that thing and I won't allow myself to play other games. Right, But with this digital future, I really see there being some issues, I think. I really do. I'm, step, I'm taking a step back and reassessing a lot of different things of my everyday life 
especially when it comes to media consumption. And I'm realizing that when it comes to a lot of media consumption and all the different things that exist, subscriptions can stack and stack and stack until you realize you're spending upwards of five, six, seven hundred dollars a month in subscriptions. I know that seems crazy. I'm including like, you know, internet and stuff like that, but services as a whole are so crazy. Movies and gaming and whatever it may be, you're spending so much money and the real question comes down to, are you using it? I just, I don't know. All digital is weird. It really is. And I think that maybe give yourself 90 days where you're like, I'm going to unsub from some of these services and I'm going to only play the games I own or better yet, I'm going to purchase a game and play it. Because I know for me in doing so, having less options allows me to enjoy what's in front of me versus always considering the alternative. And if you live life where every decision you make, you're going to consider the alternative. You're going to sit there looking over the fence at all times and letting the grass that is truly greener on your side just die because you're going to watch other people cultivate something while you're sitting there with perfectly capable, the perfectly great situation, but it just passes away because you consider every alternative before you consider the very thing that's in front of you. So maybe maybe it's time to make a change i don't know all i know is all digital is whack i know pc gamers are like dude stop crying it's just different from our, us for us console gamers we're a different breed we're a little bit more old school we're a little more analog i think that that's a thing I don't think all gamers are the same. I think there is a difference between console gaming and PC gaming. I think that the differences are console gaming is simpler and caters to a simpler audience, right? They just want to plug and play and maybe own a version of something that you can hold. And the PC gamer enjoys the complexity, enjoys the adventure, enjoys the uh, additional intellect that's required. Maybe that's what it is. Hey, Steam Deck's an all digital machine. I own nothing. If my Steam library goes away, it's gone forever. So, food for thought, coffee for thought, whatever you want to call it, I'm uh, done here. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, happy gaming.